Hello everyone and greetings from Singapore. Firstly, I would like to thank the organizers for this invitation and the opportunity to talk to everyone. Today, I'm pleased to share with you the exciting developments in neuraxial labor analgesia. Labor pain is one of the most painful experiences for the woman. Intractable pain is not innocuous and therefore it is imperative for us to control it. Neuraxial block is still the gold standard. As obstetric anesthetists, we strive to provide the ideal epidural, seamless analgesia, customize the patient's needs, maximizing safety and minimizing side effects at the same time. Epidural analgesia is the epitome of patient-centered care, which is defined as care that's responsive and respectful of patients' individual's needs and preferences. In other words, changing the conversation to what really matters to the patient. And patient autonomy is, of course, the key tenet in patient-centered care, and therefore patient control epidural analgesia is clearly the modality of choice. And indeed, for the past decade, PCEA with a background infusion has been strongly advocated. Having a background continuous infusion has been found to improve analgesia, maternal satisfaction, and reduces the need for interventions. And without greater side effects to the mother and the neonate. So though arguably a background infusion may not be required after a successful induction of analgesia, especially in early labor, but as labor advances and pain escalates, a background infusion may be useful. Therefore, as pain intensifies and extensifies, often unpredictably and erratically, having a variable background infusion may provide superior analgesia. And we have previously designed a computer integrated system to adapt to patients' demands by automatically adjusting the background doses, which has enabled us to better match consumption according to patients' needs. And this leads me to my first take home message, which is instead of a paradigm of looking for a perfect regimen, we should perhaps look for one that best meets each patient's needs due to the vast inter individual and intra-individual requirements. The second take-home message is for background maintenance of epidural analgesia, it is better we program intermittent boluses. In other words, the rate of injection matters. I'm aware that another speaker is discussing the role of program intermittent boluses, so I will not belabor the point. But it suffices to say that intermittent boluses have been shown to improve labor analgesia in our center and elsewhere. There is certainly value in the quality of analgesia and drug sparing effects in head to head comparison with a continuous infusion. Similarly, in conjunction with PCA, program intermittent boluses improve analgesia, reduce consumption, and enhance maternal satisfaction. And this brings me to my third political message, which is more like a proposition. I'm suggesting to you that there is now an opportunity for us to design a decision support system to provide personalized real-time analgesia. In other words, leveraging technology, artificial intelligence, and connectivity, we are now able to create decision support systems to improve outcomes and experience. Here, I will give you two examples. First is in relation to learning to do epidural block, which is in this study, we found uh, that one of the most difficult anesthetic procedures to perform was actually an epidural block. And this finding was uh, further corroborated by a later study that showed that most non-vis anesthetists needed something like 30 to 50 procedures to gain competency. So potentially putting the same number of women in harm's way in order to train a well-trained um, anesthetist. An accidental dural puncture, which is one of the most common complications of epidural analgesia, does not only result in short-term suffering and pain, the consequences can be more dire. So in this EMBRACE report published several years ago, 
Though anesthesia per se was not the major contributor to maternal death, the data showed that up to 50% or two out of four mortalities due to anesthesia were caused by an accidental dural puncture. So the issue is certainly not trivial. And there are certainly gaps in the way we learn and do epidurals. Most of us in Singapore would use the palpation technique, which is essentially a blind technique, which may not be so reliable in difficult patients. Ultrasonography has gained some popularity. The main challenge, of course, is in mastering the interpretation of the black and white pixels, and it can be more reliable for those who know how to use it. Inspired by this, we have used supervised machine learning with a technique called support vector machine to extract, match, and detect features of real-time ultrasound images to produce automated ultrasound guidance software for needle insertion to optimize entry point as well as the depth of the needle. I will show you uh, two very short video clips um, to demonstrate how that's done. The first one is a longitudinal scan to mark the L34 into space. As you can see, um, this is a self uh, annotated system marking on the skin. And that's immediately followed by a transverse scan to align the midline and uh, also to uh, measure the depth of aperture space. Done automatically, of course, and then the marking on the skin. And using this for spinal anesthesia, the system was able to produce higher uh, first attempt success compared with palpation, taking about a minute to do with excellent correlation between the visualized and actual depth of uh, spinal space. And this uh, also has the potential of being a good educational and training tool uh, as it could potentially democratize skill acquisition and shorten training time. And another area where technology might be helpful is in the management of breakthrough pain during epidural analgesia. And breakthrough pain or pain occurring in spite of epidural analgesia can undermine maternal satisfaction and increase anesthetist workload. So it'd be useful to be able to predict and manage this preemptively. And in our previous study, we found uh, that a high BMI as well as a low success to total demand ratio of PCA were predictive of breakthrough pain and breakthrough pain itself was predictive of uh, poor satisfaction and increased instrumentation during delivery. And also in our follow-up study, breakthrough pain was also predictive of epidural catheter reciting. So it, it is a pheno phenomenon which is worthy of study. And indeed our preliminary study to explore machine learning, which we believe is the first in obstetric anesthesia has shown that the breakthrough pain could be reliably predicted. Though in this study, we weren't able to demonstrate the greater value of uh, machine learning uh, in comparison with conventional logistic regression model, but with better definition of uh, the types of breakthrough pain and a greater resolution of uh, data analytics of breakthrough pain, um, this equation could very easily shift uh, to favor artificial intelligence. And indeed, we have taken baby steps in that direction, and we totally ag agree with the view that it is definitely too early to rule out the role of machine learning in obstetric analgesia. So in short, I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that labor pain is subjective, and there's no one-size-fits-all epidural. PCA is still the gold standard, so do use a background intermittent bolus instead of a, an infusion for superior analgesia. And finally, technology-based systems can improve safety, efficacy, and the individualization of care. With that, I thank you very much uh, for your attention. And I'd like to thank and acknowledge my collaborators and funders. Uh, and a disclaimer as well that I have ownership of intellectual property and commercial interests in some parts of the technology I spoke about earlier. And as such, the content of my talk must be taken in that light. So thank you very much. Uh, again for your attention and I hope to see you all in Singapore for the World Congress in 2024 and I wish everyone the best of health always. Please stay safe and well. Thank you very much indeed.